Second World War veteran Lieutenant Colonel Al Trotter joined the Air Force as a teenager. He flew 44 enemy bombing missions over Germany and on that final mission in 1944, Trotter and his crew were shot down by a German fighter plane. He spent the rest of the war in a POW camp. His de he's detailed his wartime service in a new book, Against the Odds, and on this Remembrance Day Eve, talks about the importance of November 11th. Well, the top picture is the, shows you the size of that airplane. It's, that's the whole squadron, all the, the maintenance people and all the air crew that are under the wing of that airplane. Up in the top right-hand corner is my, my crew. Over 60 years ago, Al Trotter was deemed an average pilot upon graduation, but his career serving in a unit with less than a 5% survival rate turned out to be anything but average. I was on the uh, three largest losses, uh, 73 on Berlin, 79 on Leipzig, and 96 on Nuremberg. That's, uh, and then but on the Nuremberg one, we lost another 45 over England because the fog came in all over the bloody island. I landed in just by bloody luck. It wasn't the last time luck was on Trotter's side. After successfully completing 43 missions, a record that challenged the odds, he and his crew embarked on what was to be their second to last sortie the night of August 12th, 1944. I guess the night you got shot down, it was, it was a complete surprise. And it was a, apparently a new, new uh, Junkers 188, they called it. It was a night fighter, German night fighter. They blasted us real good and uh, uh, I had fire in two starboard engines and in the fuselage. And I ordered the crew to bail out immediately. And uh, the bomb aimer was down, was down the nose, so his job then was to open the chute, and uh, he would be first out. Uh, then up the uh, engineer and the, and the navigator went out next, and I remember them grabbing me on the shoulder, and grabbing my shoulder as I went by. And then I could look down, and I couldn't see any of my, my gunners because there was so much smoke in the fuselage, because it was on fire as well. And I could see the wireless operator, I could see him, but he was hanging over his, just hanging over his seat, but in other words, his belt was holding him up, and I was quite sure he was dead. I finally realized there was nothing I could do in that airplane to help my boys, the other ones, and I must get out if I wanted to save my own life. The events of that fateful night would replay themselves over and over in Trotter's mind for decades to come. Did I do everything possible to save them? You're always going to find that you blame yourself, you know, because you're the pilot, you're the captain. They were closer than brothers. And they, they, the sad part of it all is, you know, the one trip away from finishing. But there was no time to dwell on these concerns. Trotter was captured in a matter of days and interrogated under the suspicion of being a spy before being transferred to the infamous Stalag Luft III prisoner of war camp. I cried. That's the first time it ever I broke down in any way, shape, or form. Just because of what had happened over that period of time, you know, the, the facing firing squads and heat treatment and now suddenly to be sent to a permanent camp it may, it meant that I had a hell of a good chance of surviving. Unfortunately, it wasn't that simple. With the Allied forces advancing on all fronts, the plan was to use the 250,000 POWs as bargaining tools. On January 27, 1945, their future was open for speculation. They set out on the thousand-mile march heading west in an attempt to evade Russian troops. It was snowing to be hell when it held it out. I got out of there at 2 o'clock in the morning. There was a good wind and about roughly five to six inches of snow on the ground. And here we were, you know, we had no mitts and uh, all this stuff. We, we used old socks. We put on socks for your hands on it. And that's how the, start, the march started. It ended alongside the war in May of the same year. While the numbers have never been substantiated, it's estimated 10% did not survive the trek. And that was the worst part of my whole living experience. I think one of the most fam famous 
complicated uh, questions I always get seem to get from people is, were you ever scared? And uh, my answer is very straightforward and simple. Anybody that says they're never scared are definitely good candidates for uh, the Liars Club in Canada because everybody suffers from being afraid. Bravery is nothing more than overcoming fear. Now, over 60 years later, those fears have changed. Our greatest fear is that we'll be forgotten. I know the cost, okay? I know the cost. I know that uh, there are 57,000 Canadian, young Canadians left their, their families and were killed overseas. But the Air Force alone lost 17,000. The crew I was with lost 10,000, if they forget. Boy, that means that this is a hell of a place we paid for people to forget.